Hello and welcome. If we haven't met before, my name is James Follant and I believe the world of Australian wine is beautiful and complex. So I create videos for wine lovers to learn more about the world of wine. If you're new here, please consider subscribing on the seventh live stream out of the 12 wines of lockdown. We will be talking about tonight the Australian wine regions. So if you're just joining me, let me know in the chat what you're drinking. Tonight I am drinking a red wine from the Hunter Valley, a Shiraz from Tullox, the Paul Colburn Dry Red Shiraz from 2018. It's a medium-bodied Hunter Shiraz that's about 12.5% alcohol content, so a lighter Shiraz. Let me know what you're drinking here tonight in the chat. You've just joined me. Otherwise, we can jump straight in to the Australian wine regions. I will show a visual as well as I might jump into some of the stuff from Holiday's Wine Companion. I might jump into some of the stuff from Holiday's Wine Companion. They do an excellent job. I've got the 2021 edition here with me in the 2020 edition on my bookshelf over yonder as we look at Australian wine, but I'm going to start looking at it from an American perspective because they have a beautiful visual, they have a beautiful, they have a beautiful visualization to jump into that. So looking at the Australian wine regions, thinking that it's not just about Shiraz in Australia. Australia spent millions of dollars on building a brand around Shiraz, Australia's word for Syrah. So around the world, old world wine in France, Shiraz is often referred to as Syrah, and the marketing paved the way for Australia wine production to triple since 1990. However, despite the success, Australian wine have suffered some drawbacks in the media. Wine critics often disregard most Aussie wine as critter wines, referring to the cute animal designs that adorn wine labels. They're thinking about probably the Yellowtail brand as part of that. So it's time to dig deeper than the bottom shelf at the grocery store and discover what's happening in Australia's wine region. So yes, there's more to Australian wine than Yellowtail and Little Penguin. There's so much, much more. So looking at this massive map, as we think about Australian wine regions, Kind of zoom in there onto the photo to bring out some of those things. Very much focused on the East Coast with a little bit of Western Australia, Adelaide and Tasmania thrown in to the mix as well. I'll open that link in a new tab to delve into what's happening there as part of that as well as talk through it. So you might have guessed that Australia's main vineyard produce is Shiraz followed by Chardonnay. These two varieties make up 44% of the total wine production. And what the production totals don't say is Australia is trying to diversify growers and are replacing many of the Chardonnay and Shiraz plantings in favour of Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir and Sauvignon Blanc. So where is Australian wine country? The largest region by far is South Australia. One major city in South Australia is one major city in South Australia is home to the Australian Wine Research Institute, which I believe would be Adelaide. And the Australian Wine Research Institute is responsible for much of the world's research on dry farming techniques and commercial wine operations. Besides South Australia, keep your eyes peeled for the two up and coming wine regions western australia and victoria and i would say that they're much more than up and coming at the moment they're quite well developed and they have their own sub regions with their own notable characteristics so this article is coming from an american perspective that i'm sharing about here this evening so thinking about the top australia wine regions the three major wine regions in australia by sheer volume are south australia new south wales and victoria so new south or south australia and new south wales are known for their warmer climate varieties such as shiraz and cabernet sauvignon whereas 
Victoria is known for cool, climate-loving Pinot Noir. So Adelaide is the hub of the largest wine-growing region in Australia. A few miles from Adelaide, the largest city in South Australia, is the Barossa Valley, South Australia's most prestigious growing area. It's interesting to note that most of the wine from the area is Lower Murray and Fleury. That's one I have not heard of before. So it'll be interesting to see what the list of the geeky geographic indicators is. So Barossa Valley is 45 minutes from Adelaide with the rolling hills of the Barossa Valley. And the region is unique because it's isolation from the rest of the world. And the Loxera hasn't yet infected vineyard soils in the Barossa, which means that some of the homes, some of the oldest living vineyards in the world, and I think the oldest living Shiraz vine is found thought to be found at Langmile, the Freedom 1843, planted by Christian Oreck, a immigrant fleeing religious persecution in Prussia, who planted a vineyard there in 1843 for the Freedom Shiraz. So when in South Australia, what should you seek out? Looking at the old vine Shiraz, they have the old vine charter in South Australia, which is quite unique and i think i could unpack that on another live stream or video so the old vine shiraz is top notch it's both smoky and rich with spice famous producers in this area include penfolds elterton and rockford i'm looking forward to one day trying a rockford basket press shiraz but you can also keep your eyes out peeled for red blends for GSM, our abbreviation of Grenache, Shiraz, Maverde, and the major, which are major blending grapes used in the French Southern Rhone wines. The two famous regions that flank the Barossa are the Clare Valley, which produces a lot of Riesling, Riesling as well as the Eden Valley, known for their white wines, as well as... Trying to bring up that map. Let's see South Australia in focus. Bring that up. So looking towards there. Uh, Kangaroo Island, unfortunately, has been burnt out by the recent bushfires in 2020. So I'm not optimistic about seeing a lot of grapes come out of there. Then then you have the Barossa Valley in Eden Valley next to the Adelaide Hills and McLaren Vale down closer to the sea, and then the Riverland area in the Lower Murray. And where is Coonwara? Is known for producing some excellent Cabernet Sauvignon from this area here. And there's something called the Terra Rosa soil, some rich red fertile soil, that is a long strip down here that has a reputation for producing Cabernet Sauvignon as part of that. So I think I've got a special spot in my heart for Barossa Valley Shiraz and Adelaide Hills wines because of a trip there where I proposed to my now wife, which is awesome. So special spot in particular in the Barossa Valley or Jacobs Creek as part of that and in Adelaide Hills, Pondoff Hill where I came across an alternative variety of white wine and red wine, so Bordal Frankish, the blue chip wine made from Austria as well as the Grüne Vettliner. They specialize in Austrian varieties at Pondoff Hill which I absolutely love. And looking at some of the other wine regions in Australia, I uh, will also jump back to the article and go back to New South Wales. So the major production in New South Wales comes from the inland Big River Zone. This area has historically produced much of the commercial Chardonnay and Shiraz for Australia. However, because of severe drought in recent years, more wine growers are experimenting with drought-friendly varieties like Tempranillo and Vidello. 
and Victoria. Their commercial winemaking in Northwest Victoria makes up the majority of wine production in the entire region. However, the growing areas of interest are cooler and closer to Melbourne, such as the Mornington Peninsula, Yarra Valley, and the cool climate areas in Victoria have received a lot of praise for their Pinot Noir. So they have a guide for up-and-coming wines in the Victoria Hills and breaks down some of the regions as part of that. So I'll just highlight some of the particularly well-known regions that I buy wine from as part of that. Um, they reflect probably more of my own tastes as part of the wines here on this list as we look at this poster. I'll copy that image address and open it up so I can zoom right in. So I go very much towards the New South Wales end of the spectrum towards the Hunter Valley. So I've got quite a lot of Shiraz from the Hunter Valley region. I'm a big fan of producers like Tyrrells, Audrey Wilkinson, McWigan, Brokenwood up there and their work they're doing. Andrew Thomas is a smaller producer that specializes, or Thomas Wines, the winemaker is Andrew Thomas, that specializes in Shiraz and Semion, which I love, which is the two varieties that the Hunter Valley is well known for as part of that. I'm enjoy the medium body Shiraz that comes from there. I'm drinking a wine here tonight that was made at Tullox and Tullox has a cellar door in the Hunter Valley as well. I've also dabbled a little bit in the Southern Highlands. A winery I'm a big fan of down there is Tractorless Vineyards. And then there's also Centennial Vineyards, which is quite highly rated. And then when I think about and yeah, and there's a winemaker down there named Jeff at Trackless Vineyards who's doing some wonderful things there. Yeah, some really interesting things. He's producing some interesting Nebbiolos, Nebbiolo being an Italian grape variety, as well as some interesting Cabernet Sauvignon using post malolactic fermentation to help in that production of the Cabernet Sauvignon. So he calls that the post-Mac Cabernet Sauvignon, as well as some excellent sparkling wines that are great value and would value and rival, I'd say it would rival the sparkling wine you'd associate with champagne. It's great value for money, in my opinion, going to Tractorless Vineyard down there. So much so I've got, some a virtual wine tasting pack from Trackless Vineyard in the mail that I need to pick up for a wine tasting, or a virtual wine tasting that will be happening Friday evening. So Jeff from Trackless Vineyards is doing some wonderful things with wine there and also innovating by bringing wine tastings to people virtually over Zoom. It's really impressive there. Canberra District... I think of Mount Madura. I think they've started producing some Bruna Vitlina, as well as they're known for some Italian varieties, like I think Tempranillo as part of that in Canberra. I really do need to go for another visit to Canberra and pop into some cellar doors and see what's around. I'm very much biased towards the Hunter Valley. I've also had the fortune of visiting Mudgee and Orange at different points in time. I think of Orange and think of Ross Hill. It's a name I've got some 2011 Ross Hill Shiraz in my rack that I found on auction after visiting their vineyard there for some Shiraz Orange. And the Adelaide Hills are known for their cool climate wines as part of... That Mudgee is a bit of a mix. I'm not really sure where to place Mudgee quite yet in terms of descriptions, but Logan Wines is one that springs to mind as part of that, that, that in, that's in that region, as well as I think Robert Oatley. Um, but I'm not all sure if I've missed up the name for Robert Oatley for that one. 
because it's just off the top of my head. Yarra Valley, Mornington Peninsula, Geelong, well known for the Pinot Noir that they're producing. Um, James Halliday has, I think, a Yarra Valley winery that he's associated with in Cold Stream Hills that are producing some excellent, excellent Pinot as part of that. I find some of the Melbourne wines slightly higher price point that goes with that as well. And then we can go over to Western Australia. I'm probably most aware of kind of the Margaret River, River Cabernet Sauvignon that they produce as part of that, less so. Um, some of the other districts, they're left less familiar to me as part of what they're producing. So it's a really interesting thing that I'll explore over time, some of those Western Australian regions, but they're stretching all across the coast in and around Western Australia. I think I probably missed listing some more vineyards in the Barossa Valley that I'm aware of kind of Tenfolds is a notable brand name that people would recognize all around the world coming out of the Barossa Valley as well is one that, that yeah really comes to mind for me so hello an off-topic question so an off-topic question not related to Australian wine regions I see welcome to the live stream I'm sorry, I don't check my Insta DMs particularly often. I rarely ever drink beer. I think the last time... I don't think... Uh, no, I had a beer after football. One time this year, it was a furphy. I very rarely drink beer. I've probably had no more than a dozen beers in my life. But thinking about different regions within Australia, I'd say Geelong would be one of my favorites. One of the other things I can do is jump into the book that I have from the Halliday Wine Companion, talking about the different regions to just kind of go through and give you some of my highlights from wineries and places that are there. So I'll jump around quickly uh, as I have a much more comprehensive um, visualization. So this website is good. It gives it to you in a visual way where the wine regions in Australia are, which is awesome, but... I also enjoy, if I hop back to the broadcast can, um, the book that I have, it really kind of breaks down the different places, wineries in each of the regions to give you a lot more detail, to give you a lot more information about what is what and what is where. So like I said, we're talking about the Hunter Valley, Audrey Wilkinson, Jim Badgen was one I didn't mention, Broken Wood. I like the, uh, I haven't tried the Lewis wines, but hard to say, easy to drink is part of their motto. First Creek is one I'm aware of. Hungerford Hill is one I want to try. Lakes Folly is one I want to try. Lego Estate Wines is a, one I visited before. McWiggins Wines is one I have a subscription to. My grandfather is a big fan of that. And Tempest 2 have a nice cellar door pretty close to broken wood and mcwiggins i'm a big fan of the shiraz and the semion coming out of thomas wines i like the variety of mcwiggins and the value that they have in their subscription packs if i flip across to the barossa valley and think about what's going on in that region there as i zoom Back into the Barossa region. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat about these different 
wine regions as well. And the zooming in, zooming out is not playing as nicely. So the Adelaide wine region with the kind of Adelaide Hills, Eden Valley and Barossa Valley. Probably easier to kind of see that here in this, this image that they're kind of smaller regions next to each other, but with very distinct geographies. So some of my kind of highlights looking at the list of wineries I can see listed here in front of me that I've heard of or, or been to as part of thinking about the Barossa Valley would be kind of the Burge family winemakers, also potentially Grant, Burge, Elderton, Jacobs Creek, Langmile, St. Hugo. I like the sounds of Maverick wines. I haven't been there before. Penfolds is well known. Rockford, St. Hallett, St. Hugo, Shield Estate Wines, Sepults Field, Spin Spinifex, Turkey Flat, Wolf Blast, Wolf Blast from Wolfgang Blass has had an incredible history. I got to see some of that display in the town of Handorf. I think there's a Wolf Blass museum up that way. And I also like thinking about the Adelaide Hills and some of the wineries there. It's a much smaller region, but they're doing some really interesting stuff there. Some boutique wines, I think, of Handorf Hill. As one of those bird in hand, another, and Posite wines is one I've come across as well, but I haven't actually tried cool climate wines. I think Barrister's Block lost a lot of things to fire in the 2020 bushfires as part of that another wine region that's nearby is the eden valley with a variety of different kind of wines there as i flick through the thing so eden valley some of the ones that i think of are henschke henschke's hill of grace a famous wine that would rival the penfolds grange there's also the rose hill vineyard the Henschkes are part of the first Australian families of wine, which is awesome. Supporting Australian businesses and businesses that still are owned by Australian families. And we have the Clare Valley nearby to the Eden Valley as well. On this map, I'm just trying to see where it is. So the Barossa Valley and the Eden Valley and the Clare Valley is north of that. So the Clare Valley has producers like Thomas Wines, another, oh no, sorry, that's Taylor's, Taylor's Wines, another family of Australian wines. Riesling Freak, known for produ the n number of Rieslings that they put out of various styles, recognised for their quality and consistency year after year. And then I can also jump back across to the map that has Canberra on it and unpack some of those wines going on in and around Canberra. So Clonakilla is famous for a Shiraz Viognier blend. Lark Hill is another one that I think of in my mind, as well as Mount Majura, with what's going on down in that area. And then if I flick across and try and find the Southern Highlands as part of what's going on there, I'll see if there's anything else to add from Tractorless Vineyards as well as... Actless Vineyards, as well as, yeah, Centennial Vineyards. Southern Highlands is a much smaller 
region and there's not necessarily many things rated particularly in holidays much smaller less notable but if we jump across and back up and think about the mudgy and orange regions so thinking at mudgy we come across robert stein vineyard roseby i was thinking about opening a roseby wine later tonight to go with the steak it was for dinner dinner but i opened a cabernet sauvignon from chapel hill down in I think that could have been the Adelaide Hills. It was in the kind of the Adelaide area somewhere. Having a seven on from there. Uh, the Bore Pear one is an interesting one that I haven't tried out. I'm not sure if Bunamagoo is still open in the Mudgee region, but Logan Wines is something I have a bottle of and have visited myself. When we jump across to the orange region we th i think of and see and have visited i think i think hefa station was on the list the last time we were there but didn't, we didn't quite get there but philip shaw wines ross hill wines as well as swinging bridge as part of some of the things that they're doing there which has been really exciting just getting a kind of an overview of different australian wine regions let me know. Do you have any questions in the chat? Any questions in the chat about different Australian wine regions that I can help answer for you here this evening? I think a lot of my purchasing has been around Hunter Valley Shiraz as well as Barossa Valley Shiraz. And I've started looking for deals in and around Cabernet Sauvignon from Kunwara, Margaret River, to kind of diversify and expand my collection and broaden my horizons and tastes, the things that I enjoy on my palate. I definitely lean towards the red wines, although I do also enjoy kind of like a Grunewitliner, a Riesling, a Semillon, kind of different styles of white wines. I'm I will try a Chardonnay. I struggled to find a Chardonnay that I really enjoy. And one region that there's one winery I forgot to mention in this that kind of stretches across, I think, Hunter Valley and Yarra Valley is De Bortoli. They do a nice mix. They've got a dessert wine called the Noble One that is well awarded and has a good reputation stretching back many vintages as well so please let me know if you have any questions in the chat that i can answer about different australian wine regions different australian wine varieties in those regions tonight i am sipping on a red wine from Tullox, a 2018 Polkabin Dry Shiraz, 12.5% alcohol, so a little bit lighter on being responsible with that. Let me know what you're drinking in the chat. Let me know if you have any questions as well, because I'll be getting ready on to move on to the tea for the rest of this evening. A nice cup of peppermint tea. Doing a great job there. Delicious wine. Light, complex, or medium bodied, more so as part of that experience and that expression that I really enjoy. So, thank you for tuning in to the series, the 12 Wines of Lockdown. Tonight is the seventh live stream of 12 that I've done covering Australia's wine regions. I'm aiming to go live 8 p.m. each night, except for Sundays, to do a live stream about wine. So let me know if you have any wine-related questions in chat that I could answer in another video or another live screen, or if you're watching this on a replay, please comment there as well for me to be able to answer any of those questions. I love wine. 
I love creating videos about wine and love sharing the experience of wine with people and helping answer any questions people might have in enjoying the journey and wine is best shared with friends and family as part of this journey. So thank you for tuning in this evening. Thank you for watching. And if you have no more questions, I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.